Welcome future nurses. Today we are going to learn about Maslow's. This is essential in nursing school. This is essential in your nursing practice. Maslow's is how we identify the priorities for our clients. So I love teaching this content. It's one of my favorite things to teach because you will see it in every single course. You will see it every day in your nursing practice. I highly recommend to please watch this video and your nursing process video before you watch the video that shows you how to break down NCLEX style questions because it'll really tie it all together for you. So Maslow's is a theorist that believes that humans are motivated to reach certain needs before other needs. So Maslow stated that at the bottom of the pyramid, humans need to meet physiological needs such as our need to breathe, our need for food and water, our need for shelter, over the need for safety, over the need for love and belonging, self-esteem, and self-actualization. So he just stated that we need to meet the needs at the lower portions of the pyramid before we can meet the needs at the uppermost portions of the pyramid. So let's quickly talk about what each section of the pyramid means. Physiological, you are going to think about your physiological well-being. Can my body survive? So survival skills. Um, not so much skills, I mean I can't make fire, but <laughs> your ability to get food and water, your ability to clothe yourself, to be in a shelter that protects you from um, the outside environment. Then we have safety. Safety is the safety of your immediate environment in terms of um, protecting yourself from danger. Safety can even go into job security. And then the need for love and belonging, I like to think of it as the need to maintain relationships, to have relationships, whether it be with family or loved ones or friends. Then we get to self-esteem, which is how we view ourselves, how we um, perceive that others value us. And then self-actualization at the top of the pyramid, I always like to think about the need to meet to reach one's full potential. A lot of times we can constantly strive for self-actualization because we're constantly striving to reach our potential. So again, Maslow's just stated that if we have not met our physical needs, if our body does not have food and water, how are we gonna uh, protect ourselves from our current environment or maintain the safety of ourselves? So again, you need to meet the needs at the bottom of the pyramid prior to going up higher. So in nursing school, you have these crazy NCLEX style questions which make you mad because every single answer choice is correct. And I get it, I teach a, in a full-time job in an RM program, I feel you. But remember how I want you to view this. In the real world as a nurse, it is our responsibility to take care of the client's mind, body, and spirit. You will handle all entities or all concerns for your client. That is our job. We are in a profession to care for others. But the NCLEX in this NCLEX testing style perfect world, I want you to think that the NCLEX is just trying to determine all four things are wrong. All four things we need to look into. But if you can only pick one thing and that is what you're going to focus on and you know at the end of the day you have kept your client the safest and alive that you have picked the, the best answer, okay? So when you see these keywords and questions, I always want you to think Maslow's. First, best, most, initial priority. That means again, you can have four great answer choices, but you have to really learn to get to the best answer choice. I am a proponent of question practice. I always tell my students, the more questions you do, the better that you will get at a systematic way of breaking them down. Because remember for the NCLEX, your blueprint is your NCLEX test plan. There will be no, this is what you will see. Nobody can ever tell you what you will see on the NCLEX because you know, it's a, it's a random entity that pulls from a humongous test bank of questions. So again, you just need to have a systematic way of breaking down questions and always keep Maslow's in your nursing process at the forefront of your question breakdown. So let's look at this question. I have a couple questions for you. I'm going to flip the board over in a second and tell you how I view Maslow's in my own nursing practice and how I feel it relates to me as a nurse um, in one second. But let's look at this question. 
The nurse is caring for a homeless client. What is priority to assess? You see this key word. In the real world, don't get me wrong, we assess everything. But again, in this NCLEX testing world, I just want you to think, if you can walk in this room with this homeless client and only assess one thing, that you have kept them alive and the safest, okay? So, family support and coping. Where would that fall upon your Maslow's Pyramid? it fall into love and belonging. It's important, but is it priority? Literacy and language preference. So how do you like to communicate? How do you like for people to communicate with you? That can fall into self-esteem or even self-actualization when you think about intellectual capabilities. So again, at the higher end of the pyramid, but is that priority? Clothing and shelter. Do we need clothing and shelter for our physical body to survive? Yes, even if you're bare naked on an island, I mean, you need some type of palm trees or some type of shelter to protect you from the weather. So clothing and shelter is essential for our body survival, our physiological survival. So in terms of these answer choices so far, this is looking the best. And then knowledge of the disease process. Knowledge is important. Uh, educating our clients is important. But again, if we can only focus on one thing for this homeless client and we know we've kept them the, the safest and have met their physiological needs, we are picking according to Maslow's. So the best answer, if we can only focus on one thing, is clothing and shelter for this homeless client to ensure that their physiological needs are met. So yes, this is Maslow's, this is a theorist that states that, again, we are motivated to reach certain needs, okay? I want to talk about how I view Maslow's as a nurse. Because as a nurse, a lot of times, again, we treat mind, body, and spirit. We are holistic in nature. But if we have a client that can't breathe and a client that is anxious, maybe about going to surgery and you can only see one person, we have to go to that person and save their physiological body in order to help them with our, the psychosocial things such as anxiety or fear. So this is my nursing Maslow's Pyramid. At the bottom is always physiological needs. And I grouped it into airway, breathing, circulation, and decreased level of consciousness. With your D, I just want you to think of any change in behavior, okay? And let me break this down a little bit more. When you think airway, as a nurse and a nursing student, I am talking about your physical airway because airway and breathing are very similar to students, but there is a difference. So if you are thinking airway, they better have an airway problem. You are thinking anything to do with your trachea, your uh, larynx, your uh, bronchioles. So key words could be um, tracheal stenosis, tracheal edema, laryngospasms, bronchospasms. That means my airway, somebody choking, that's an airway obstruction. Something is wrong with my airway. Why we are concerned about airway over breathing, breathing I like to think about gas exchange. In our alveoli, in our lungs, oxygen and CO2 are constantly being exchanged. You need inspiration and expiration to allow for that exchange. But why airway trumps breathing or is priority over breathing, if I can't get oxygen in from the outside environment to my lungs, who cares about that gas exchange? So if I have an obstruction in my airway, that is your priority. Because no matter what oxygen you put in them, it's obstructed. It's not getting to our lungs for that gas exchange. So when you think airway, make sure it's related to your trachea or um, your... Uh, tracheal stenosis, deviated trachea, something related choking again, airway is airway. So airway trumps breathing. When you think about breathing, again, I want you to think about gas exchange in your alveoli. Utilizing that oxygen that now got into our lungs and excreting the CO2 that we, uh, as a byproduct of oxygen metabolism, and then uh, with circulation, when you think about circulation, I want you to think about all that lovely blood that is circulating that oxygen to all of our tissues, all of our organs, okay? So airway, think airway. Breathing, think about gas exchange. Some examples of breathing could be dyspnea, 
difficulty breathing, or thapnea, difficulty breathing while laying flat, a low pulse ox level that is showing us that we are not uh, meeting the oxygen needs of our body, a low PaO2 level or arterial oxygen level, um, anything to do, um, a pneumothorax, let's say we have unequal lung exp expansion or um, accessory muscle use. These are all examples of breathing because all those things could influence that exchange of CO2 and oxygen in our, in our alveoli. When you think about circulation, you should think about anything that influences your heart's ability to pump oxygenated blood to the rest of our tissues. So if we are hemorrhaging, we have a loss of blood volume, so therefore we're not transporting as much oxygen. A dehydrated client has a lack, lack of fluid, they're not transporting as much oxygen. Even to the opposite extent of fluid volume overload, we could have too much fluid, so now our heart is compromised. So when you think about circulation, think about that transport of oxygen in our blood, in our, the fluid level in our body that helps carry oxygen to our tissues, to our organs. And then when we think about D, a decreased level of consciousness, or think about it as a change in behavior. A change in behavior in our clients is never normal, never. Nobody, you shouldn't walk in the room and a client that was once oriented is now confused or lethargic or um, has slurred speech. That is not normal. The only reason why those things would not trump, that change of behavior would not trump an airway, breathing, or circulation problem is we don't know why. So if we have, let's say we have tracheal stenosis, or let's say the client is choking, we can act right here and now. You will do the Heimlich maneuver. We would get them an airway uh, whether it be assisting a physician or mid-level to insert an endotracheal tube. Um, if they're having a breathing problem, we can give them more oxygen. We can sit the head of the bed up. If they're having a circulation problem, let's say they're hemorrhaging, we can give them fluid. We can give them blood products. Uh, we can place them in shock position. If they're in fluid volume overload, we can administer a diuretic to help take some fluid off their body. But with this change in behavior, with this decreased level of consciousness, we don't know the cause. It could be low electrolytes. It could be hypoxia. It could be a UTI, an undiagnosed UTI. So with this change in behavior, we have to keep them safe and continue to gather more data to try to figure out what the problem is. So your physical problems are at the bottom of your nursing or my nursing process pyramid. And again, make this to how you view Maslow's. Make this how you will act as a nurse. Then I get to safety. Safety will never trump physiological needs, except, I'm gonna give you an example. Again, A, B, C, and D, airway over breathing, breathing over circulation, circulation over change in behavior. But do you see how a change of behavior actually is a safety problem? A confused client, you better ensure that they're not trying to get out of bed. So change in behavior and safety go together. So with safety, you're trying to think you are going to protect your client from whatever safety risk that is being posed in the test question scenario, okay? But there are a lot more physical problems, but you really need to think, once we get past a change in behavior, are those physical problems priority over safety? I'll give you an example. Um, a reddened area on the buttocks or your sacrum. That's it. That's a physical problem. We are thinking skin breakdown or the potential for a pressure ulcer. We have to address that as a nurse. However, if you have somebody with a reddened area on their buttocks or a confused client trying to get out of bed, who are you going to see first? Who is in the most immediate danger? It is that client trying to get out of bed. So that safety problem will trump that physical problem of a reddened area on their skin. So really with all other physical problems, really think if you see a safety issue, does it trump safety? Think who would die first if something were to happen? I'll give you another example. Example: Malnutrition, okay? Let's say we have an oncology client receiving, receiving chemotherapy who has not eaten in two days. Or, again, you have that confused client trying to get out of bed. 
Malnutrition is a concern. We always address it as a nurse, but remember in this NCLEX Perfect world, you can only see one client. So who would die first? That confused client trying to get out of bed, we don't know if they're gonna fall, but if they fall, it now is leading to a right here, right now physical problem. A client that is malnourished, think about how long it would take for them to die related to malnutrition. It would take a very long time. So really think with all the other physical problems, does it trump any safety issue? And at the top of my pyramid, the last thing I'm concerned about is psychosocial things. Think about things related to the mind. So anxiety, fear, depression. I'm not saying we don't care about those things. Again, this testing style is if you can, you can only see one person and you know you have picked the highest acuity client, the client that needs you right here, right now, the client with either a physical right here, right now problem or a safety issue. So psychosocial can take a long time to, to help an individual with. They might need counseling or uh, might need to be started on medications to help their psychosocial disorder. But you need to think if any psychosocial problem turns into a safety implication, you now treat it as safety. So a depressed client that states, I don't see the need to live anymore. That is not psychosocial anymore. That is now a safety problem. So you will treat it as a safety problem, okay? So this is how I view my nursing pyramid. And this is how I uh, assign my levels of priority. I would always pick airway over breathing, breathing over circulation, and circulation over a change in behavior. And these physical problems, airway trumps safety, breathing trumps safety. But let's say I have a safety issue and a client that is fearful of surgery. I better go to that safety issue client over somebody who is having a psychosocial problem. And last but not least, we have pain. Pain is not black or white. If pain is ever related to loss of limb or loss of life, for instance, somebody has chest pain, you now treat it as a physiological problem. Chest pain could mean that they're having a heart attack and they could die very quickly. So if you ever see any pain that could be related to loss of limb, loss of life, when you talk about orthop orthopedic procedures, you're gonna talk about compartment syndrome. That pain could be related to a lack of circulation. So that is now not just a pain issue, that is a physical problem. But the typical sensation of pain, so the your, your nervous system telling your brain that you are in pain, would you die from that? No. But if pain turns into a potential loss of life situation or that loss of limb, you need to treat it as a physical problem. So again, pain is not black or white. We can't die from the sensation of pain. But if pain is related to a physical entity, please make sure to treat it as such. So I have a couple, I love questions. I have a couple questions for us to break down. The last thing I want you to understand about question breakdown, and please reference my other video, the number one step, first step is identify your topic. When you pick your answer choice, you have to evaluate that your answer choice matches your topic. So if the topic of my question or scenario is safety, you should not be putting oxygen on that client. You should be picking a safety intervention or a safety action. If the topic of my question is psychosocial, if the client is complaining about fear related to surgery, what is the best action of the nurse? It is not again for you to put oxygen on them. The best action is something related to psychosocial, therapeutic communication, therapeutic touch, that is making sure that the topic of your question matches your answer choice. So I have three questions and we're gonna break them down. And I always like to make sure I identify the correct topic of my question. And I also like to identify the topic of my answer choices. Because if I can figure out what my answer choices are, um, it can better help me prioritize this client. So let's look at the first question. The nurse is caring for an immediate post-operative client. What assessment data requires priority intervention? We off gate no, we need Maslow's because of that keyword. So let's look, the topic of my question is a post-operative client and what assessment data requires immediate or priority intervention? So let's look at our answer choices. 
Confusion, not good. Again, we always address confusion for our clients as a nurse. But remember, you can walk in the room and only pick one thing and you have kept the client alive and the safest, okay? So confusion falls into D, a change in behavior in my A, B, C, D. Hemorrhage, hemorrhage is circulation. So between hemorrhage and confusion, you better fix hemorrhage first. Tracheal stenosis, trachea is your airway. This is a narrowing of your airway. We need to go see this. This is an airway problem and pain is pain. So if I could only see one thing for this client, I better fix their airway because without an airway, you can die in a matter of seconds, okay? So that is the priority for this client. Let's move on to the next one. The nurse is caring for an immediate post-operative client what is a priority action by the nurse? So again, um, we are talking about a post-operative client. And if we can only do one action for this post-operative client, what action would keep them the safest in this scenario? So again, let's label our answer choices and make sure we're labeling them correctly. Educate the client on pain medication available. Education or their, their ability to learn new information is psychosocial, okay? That is um, improving their intellectual well-being or educating them on a disease process. So this topic choice is psychosocial. Do we always educate our clients? Absolutely as nurses, but remember, you can only pick one answer choice and you've kept them alive and the safest, okay? So important, hold on to it, but remember, it's psychosocial in nature. Assist the client when getting out of bed. So, it's not a physical problem, but this is an immediate post-operative client. Are there safety implications for this client with activity? Absolutely. They've just got anesthesia. If they're gonna mobilize themselves, we better assist them when getting out of bed because of the risk of falls. So the answer choice for this is safety. Change the client's dressing. So let's talk about this. Um, a lot of students, because I've taught for a long time, would say, Ms. Mobley, uh, we're assessing this dressing. We're looking at the incision. We're doing all these things. You take NCLEX style questions as is. It's not saying you're assessing the wound. It is stating that you are changing a dressing for a post-operative client. Is that priority? And how do you group it into Maslow's? For me, changing his dressing is a nursing task, meaning... As a nurse, I have certain tasks I got to get done, but is it priority? Can we prove that this will help their physical well-being? No. You can't tell me it's hemorrhaging. You can't tell me that it's infected. All you can go by is what's on this paper or what is on your test question. So I group this as a nursing task. Or let's say it said send a client to a chest x-ray. Again, we can't prove they have any physical problems. We don't know what the chest x-ray will state. Us sending a client to a different area or a procedure or a diagnostic test, that is a nursing task. It is your job as a nurse to ensure that everything is ready and they are ready to go to that procedure. So I like to group those things as a nursing task. So let's look at our breakdown. Psychosocial would never trump safety, but does safety trump a nursing task, something you have to do as a nurse? Every day it does, okay? So you need to pick the safety answer over this nursing task. And again, remember, if you are treating this as it's a physical answer choice because I'm going to assess that incision, I'm gonna look at it, it doesn't say anything about assessment in this answer choice. It just says you're gonna do a task of changing a dressing. So the best answer for this question is assisting the client to get out of bed because that's a safety answer. And the last question, the nurse is caring for a hospice client with stage four pancreatic cancer. What assessment data requires priority intervention by the nurse? So again, we see our keyword and let's look. This client is a hospice client. They have stage four pancreatic cancer, that's background information. And what assessment data, so we are assessing this client. So let's identify the topic of our question. Pretty much we have gathered data and we have to see what is priority, but do not forget, your topic is a hospice client. 
So when we think about our topic for a hospice client who we know is actively dying, the point of hospice is to create quality of life while dying. So is physical needs our priority for a hospice client? No, because they are actively dying. So we need to make sure we identify the correct topic because when we think about priority for hospice client, clients, it is allowing them to die with dignity. It is allowing them to die in the best state possible. We try to control pain as much as possible with hospice clients. So that's why it is essential to identify your topic. So my topic is hospice client, what assessment data is priority? Let's label our answer choices. Shortness of breath, that falls into breathing. Urine output of 180 mLs in six hours. We know we have to create 30 mLs per hour to say that our kidneys are healthy and viable. This client is not, well, they are right at um, a viable kidney. So they're actually not having an issue. We have move on, but let's say this was 100 mLs per hour in six hours. They are creating less than what their kidney needs to state that we are having healthy kidney function. So we can't really trump it into airway, breathing, circulation, or decreased uh, level of consciousness, but call it what it is. It's low urine output, which is not normal, which we don't want for healthy individuals. Blood pressure 90 over 46. That is a low blood pressure. You could trump it into, we can't prove exactly what's going on in terms of uh, hypovolemia or dehydration or hemorrhage if that's what's going on, but it's definitely a circulation issue. And then the last thing is back pain, 10 on a scale of one to 10. They are having severe pain. So again, let's look at this client. If we can only help one thing for a hospice client, we better control their pain because they are actively dying. It is normal to see a decrease in their physiological function. Uh, to be hospice, typically all your book resources state that they have less than, it is thought that they have less than six months to live. So we should not be focusing on physiological needs. They are actively dying. Your priority for your hospice client is pain because we, again, as nurses, it is your responsibility to allow them to die with dignity, to allow them to die and hopefully as least pain as possible. So again, that goes back to identifying your topic and picking according to Maslow's what is priority for that topic, okay? So again, this is my Maslow's nursing pyramid. This is how my nursing brain works. Um, if you enjoy this, please try it and use it. And again, remember, practicing test questions using any test bank resource you have is the key to success key to success at learning how to break down these NCLEX style questions. And again, um, please reference my NCLEX testing um, question breakdown uh, video, but look at Maslow's first and then look at your nursing process before viewing that video. As always, we are better together if this has helped you in any way. That is my job. Take care.